Welcome back, everybody. Uh, the next speaker of today is uh, Francesco Della Santa, uh, who will talk about uh, graph informed neural networks for graph structure data driven. Thank you very much for your introduction uh, and welcome, everybody. I am a postdoc at the Polytechnic University of Turin, and in this presentation, I'm going to talk about a joint work with Professor Stefano Berrone, Sandra Pieraccini, and Francesco Baccarino and my colleague Antonio Master Pietro. Uh, the purpose of this work is to define a spatial based graph neural network uh, that we are going to call graph informed neural network that is specifically designed for regression tasks on graph structure data. Uh, in particular, we uh, want to implement inside the neural network architecture the graph structure developing the so-called graph informed layers. Starting with the description of the problem, we take into account functions defined on, graph, on graphs. And so we take into account, given a graph G, uh, made of n vertices B1, Bn, uh, we consider a function f that goes from omega in Rn to Rm, such that for each x in omega, it returns a vector y in Rm that depends both on the input x and the adjacency matrix A of the graph. So we have that the elements of the input vector x uh, are representing input values associated to each one of the uh, vertex of the graph, while the elements of the output vector y uh, represent output features corresponding to a subset of output vertices of the graph. Such a kind of functions can be used to model uh, uh, problems like circulation with demand problems, network interdiction models, or fract regression problems in other graph structure media. So, however, we have to uh, take into account that in real world applications, uh, such a kind of functions f can be computationally expensive and or we need thousands of function evaluations. And therefore, it's very important to find a reduced model f hat that is able to approximate the original target function f and at the same time is very cheap to be uh, executed. Moreover, if f is highly nonlinear and we need actually thousands of function evaluation, neural networks are the most suggested model to uh, build such a kind of reduced models, especially for because they are very fast in uh, the execution process. We have talked about function defined on graphs, uh, we have talked uh, about neural networks, so we have to talk about graph neural networks. Graph neural networks are actually special neural network architectures uh, specifically developed to work on graphs, but the ones present in literature uh, were originally designed mainly for other kind of tasks than regression, that is the task that we want to perform. Indeed, they are mainly designed for semi-supervised node or edge classification and similar tasks. Moreover, they suffer of some drawbacks. In particular, they do not work well when you have a deep neural network they work well only with shallow architectures, and they have also a hard scalability. So, in general, for the regression on graph structure functions, uh, we have to take into account the classic multilayer perceptrons. And therefore, our objective is to define a new spatial based GNN layer that uses the graph structure and put it inside the architecture of the neural network such that we are able to perform very well the regression task uh, better with performances that are better than MLPs and lets us build a deep neural network. So, here comes the graph informed neural networks. We uh, define the graph informed layers, so GI layers from now on, um, introducing a new graph convolution operation for graphs generalizing the, uh, let's say, classic convolution defined for images and tensors. So, if we consider a, a vector of weights W, with, where each element corresponds to one of the nodes of the graph, uh, we have the, the new convolution operation that we are going to define with respect to the graph G and the vector of weights W, is defined, can be summarized by this operation. So we have that the output feature xi prime of node bi is obtained summing up the input feature of node i and its neighbors multiplied by the weights of the corresponding nodes. So for example, here in the picture we have that x1 prime 
is obtained summing up x1 w1, x2 w2, and x4 w4 because x, uh, v2 and v4 are the neighbors of v1. However, we can consider the fact that the adjacency matrix A of the graph permits to describe the new graph convolution with respect to all the vertex inputs at the same time. So we do not have to make the convolution one node uh, uh, separately. We can make everything together. So we can give the definition of a GI layer, uh, that is a layer based on the graph G, made of n units and connected to a layer with outputs in Rn, such that it can be represented by the following characterizing function from Rn to Rn, defined by this expression, where W hat transpose x represents the convolution previously described. W transpose x is the weight matrix of the layer. This formulation is very similar to the fully connected layers. But here, the matrix of the weights is obtained multiplying the adjacency matrix of the graph plus the identity matrix with the diagonal matrix obtained by the weights. So actually, we multiply each row of A plus I for the elements of the vectors. So if we have a look at this basic GI layer, we can see that actually they can be seen as a special kind of fully connected layers with a weight matrix with element W ij that is equal to zero, so it is removed if uh, uh, the edge vi vj does not appear in the graph. It is equal to wi if the pair vi vj is an edge of the graph and is equal to wj if i is equal to j. So you can see here an example. We have a special fully connected layer where we have removed the connections if the edge doesn't appear in the graph, and moreover we have a parameter sharing property. So we have only n, in this case four parameters, instead of n of n square parameters, typical of fully connected layers. Moreover, we can generalize the GI layers to better exploit the new instrument, and so we give the definition of a general GI layer. Uh, so a GI layer with k input features per vertex and f output features per vertex is a layer of n f units with a function that goes from r n times k to r n times f and defined by this expression that without going into the details has instead of a weight matrix has a tensor matrix that is just a generalization of the previous one uh, we have instead of a bias vector, we have a bias matrix, and we have that here we have no more an input vector x, but we have a concatenation of the columns of the input matrix x. Moreover, we can also add extra operations at the end of a GI layer. We uh, can add a mask operation that lets us focus on a subset of M nodes of the graph and a pooling operation that aggregates the f output features of uh, the layer with respect to an arbitrary reducing function like, for example, the maximum, the mean, and so on. Okay, so from now on we are going to, to, uh, we are going to call uh, uh, neural networks based on GI layers as graphing for neural networks, so we are going to call them genes. And at the beginning we can observe that the GI layers uh, let exploit the depth in neural network architectures because actually they have a matrix tensor formulation, this one, and moreover they have the parameter sharing property that we have seen before. So we can add uh, a, lot, uh, a big number of layers without increasing too much the, uh, the number of parameters uh, that we have to train. In particular concerning the number of trainable parameters, we have that any GI layer has this number of trainable parameters, nkf plus nf. These are the tensor weights and this is the bias matrix. Okay, so uh, we can also add a proposition that helps us, uh, that helps us to uh, understand how much deep we have to build a, a graphing formula network. Indeed, if we consider a gene made of each consecutive GI layers, we have then the input feature xi of node vi actually contributes to the prediction of the neural network of the output feature yj hat of node vj if and only if the depth h is greater than or equal to the distance of the two nodes in the graph. Okay, so this is the formal definitions 
of QA layers and graphing for neural networks, let's see some numerical experiments. We decided to test our new uh, architectures on uh, a maximum flow problem on stochastic flow networks. Okay, so we recall what a stochastic flow network is. It is a, a network based on a directed graph G, where we have two nodes, S and T, that are the source and the sink of the network, respectively. And we have a probability distribution P that define the edge capacities of the network. So, the max flow problem with respect to calligraphic G is uh, the problem that we want to study this distribution of the maximum flow phi that arrives to the sink T, varying the edge capacities, here represented by a vector C in Rn, where n is the number of edges of my network. Some interesting application of this problem are, for example, uh, when we want to predict the city traffic flow, we want to optimize good distributions on a network, and so on. Okay, so concerning the, fun the function that we want to approximate, we consider the max flow function. So given E1, EM, the edges, the incoming edges of the sink, we define the max flow function of calligraphic G as the function F, that again goes from omega in Rn to Rm, as the function that at each uh, capacity vector associates a vector of, uh, of max uh, of fluxes corresponding to the edges. And so we have that the max flow is given by the sum of the elements of this vector. Uh, the stochastic max flow regression problem with neural networks, therefore, consists in training a neural network with function f that approximate f. To analyze the performance of a neural network trained to approximate f, we introduce the following performance measures, the edgewise average mean relative error and the max flow mean relative error. We don't go into the details of the formula, but I think that the names are almost uh, understandable. We denote by uh, phi hat uh, the predicted vector of fluxes. Okay, the network we are going to consider uh, in this presentation is, uh, in a nutshell, a network uh, generated from a random Erdos-Schwann graph that, in the end, is characterized by a max flow function f that goes from r269 to r15. Uh, here we have uh, highlighted the sink and the, and the source of the network. And we then uh, train both MLPs architectures and gene ar architectures to uh, learn the max flow function. However, we, ha we have to specify that since the gene models are defined to perform regression on nodes of a graph, we have to define them with respect not to the adhesion symmetrix A of the stochastic flow network, but on the adhesion symmetrix AL of the line graph of G. So where we have switched the, the edges into nodes and nodes into edges in an action. Okay, so the architecture archetype we consider for MLPs is almost simple, as MLPs are. So we uh, vary as hyperparameters the number of hidden layers H and the activation function of the hidden layers. While the architecture archetype we, considers, uh, we consider for the genes is the following one. We have, it is a bit more complicated because we have more hyperparameters. So we have again H, the number of hidden layers. We have F, the activation function with the layers. But we have also capital F, that is the number of output features of the hidden GI layers. We also vary the pooling operation of the output GI layer and the weight initialization. Since it is a new model, we want to understand if the uh, typical initialization that works well for MLPs works well also for genes models. Okay, so in the end, uh, we have a total number of 528 neural networks that we trained for this problem. We uh, perform uh, two different cases of training. The first one, we train all the models with respect to 1,000 training data. In the second case, we perform the training with respect to 500 training data. And all the models are uh, analyzed, measuring the errors, uh, with respect to a test set of 3,000 samples. So in general, we observe that the genes uh, outperform the MLPs, so we are very happy about this. And in particular, we have that deeper genes retro better the performances, uh, and increasing the number of output features of the hidden layers, uh, we also see an improvement of the performances, but actually a clear good is not uh, evident, and so uh, we have uh, to analyze it better in future. 
In the end, this is just an observation, uh, we see that both the architectures have worse performances with rail activation function, probably because it's too much linear for a regression uh, task, and obviously they have worse performance with the greater uh, mini-batch mini size. In particular, if we look at the table, we, uh, we see that the genes in both the two cases of 1,500 training data, the best three models are genes, but not only the three best, uh, the best three models, the uh, 250 or more models, the best one, are genes. Indeed, the three best MLPs are the 263rd, 264, and 267th, with respect to 528 models. Uh, the situation is a bit better for MLPs when we decrease the number of training samples. Just to have uh, a view, a, re uh, a visual representation of this table, we can see uh, the scatter plot. We are in the uh, error plane. We have the edgewise mean relative error on the, uh, on the horizontal axis and the mean relative error of the max flow on the uh, vertical axis. We have that the red dots are the MLPs, and they are here. All the other dots are genes, are gene models, and we clearly see how much better are they. Okay, so in conclusion, we present our novel graphing for layer for neural networks, uh, useful for regression problems uh, on graphs, and in particular, we built uh, the GI layer defining a new convolution operation on graphs, and we state the formal definitions reporting the main theoretical properties of these layers. In the end, we tested and analyzed the regression performances of these new neural networks, making a comparison with the main benchmark represented by MLPs, obtaining very good results for our new architecture. Concerning the future, uh, at this moment we are working on uh, applying genes to real-world applications, in particular to discrete fractal network models, and we are extending uh, the usage of genes also for other tasks that is not just regression but also classification of nodes, for example. In the future, we aim to define a new GI layer where the adjacency matrix A is not a hyperparameter but it's a variable, and so we can apply them to different kind of graphs. So this is the bibliography uh, of the works that I cited in my work. In particular, if you are interested in more details about the genes, you can find our paper published on mathematics. And if you want to try to use graphing formula networks for your problems, you can find the GI layers available on GitHub at this link. You can download it if you use uh, Keras and TensorFlow, you can insert these layers in your neural network. And this is my end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you for your presentation. So is there any question? Uh, I, I have just a curiosity about the real life application you mentioned. Do you have anything in mind or because I, I once heard the thought about graph neural network applied to image processing. So instead of considering the images as it's usually done, they were, were representing as a, a graph, and then using graph neural network to do blur or something like that. Okay, I am not an expert about image processing, but uh, maybe they can be applied. Actually, the idea of the graph neural networks, in our case, comes from this problem where we have a network of underground flow fractures in under the ground, and you have to analyze the uh, fluid flows like water, oil, gas, that comes out. But, so we have, at the moment, tried them here, or for stochastic flow networks that can be used to other kind of tasks. Maybe we can try also for other application that involves graphs. Thanks. Any other questions? So, uh, thank you for the presentation. And can this be applied to learn about, let's say, uh, distributions on uh, like random edge Rini graphs? Let's say, like when you have uh, presence of like an edge or a, uh, absence or edge, you use this and you kind of tend to have like uh, kind of uh, information about the distribution of the presence or the absence of the graph at a particular snapshot. If you uh, think, for example. Uh, in the case here, and also in the application of the discrete factor networks, uh, if I understood the question, for example, in this case, these are the errors, okay, but we actually train the neural networks 
to learn to associate for each uh, edge capacity vector the corresponding uh, vector of flows. And therefore, if you, since you know the probability distribution of the uh, capacities, you can take a sample of any size of edge capacities, thousands of samples, you make prediction in, in, in seconds, and obtain, and therefore build and reconstruct the distribution of the max flow. So if you have similar problems, if I understood well the question, you can try to apply them in this, in this way. Okay, another question? Just a question. Uh, in the end, you mentioned the fact that you want to uh, apply this uh, GI layers to a uh, neural network. It's a G with A, the adjacency matrix, as a variable. But uh, uh, it's more depending on the problems, so or it can be, or you want to apply a structure that can be changed whether the. Yeah. The, the idea is that if I'm able to, to build a, a good GI layer where A is no more fixed but can be an input of the neural network, maybe I can try to apply the genes also to the problem where the graph connection changes. Okay. So, okay, so okay. this is a future... Okay, uh, okay. So a, a time uh, evolving... Uh, exactly. For example, okay. or in the case of the... DFNs, for example, we have probability distribution that generates the connections. So we uh, uh, we train the neural network varying the distribution of the networks uh, that connect each other, and we are able to make prediction more general, much more, more general depth uh, on the one with respect to the distribution of the flows. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? All right. Okay. So let's thank again the speaker.